Hi everybody, so if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that I live by the sea. That gives me an unhealthy obsession with power from the sea, generating from the sea. And there are two ways that you can actually do that. One is wave power, and the other is tidal power. Tidal power is predominantly from the influence of the moon. Wave power is actually the wind blowing across the sea, and they have two distinct characteristics to them. So what we're interested in is the wave. That one right there. If you watch it, what you'll see is that it has a height between the bottom and the top, and a time to come in. That height is the amplitude and that time is the wavelength. And if we can capture that energy, even though it's linear on the surface, so it's going in and out and up and down, but underneath it's going round and round. If we can capture that up and down, in and out, change it into a smooth rotation, of course we can connect it to a generator. The question is, how do we do that? Of course, there are already machines that are doing that, and two that spring to mind are the Pelamis, or Sea Snake, and the Wave Dragon. The Pelamis is actually up in production in Edinburgh's mid sales and is having great success, and it just bobs up and down using linear actuators. The Wave Dragon has big arms spread out, capture the waves, it dumps them into a reservoir, and they pour down a hole, turning a turbine. Brilliant ideas in production, and of course, I have another suggestion. And this is it. And of course it's a Tinkercad file and of course those files are freely available for download and the link is in the description. And you can see it's very little more than a pile of parts. But here it is when we've printed it off. Now it's based on bevel gears. So it's a bit like a differential I suppose. But the bevel gears interlock and whichever way we turn one of those bevel gears, this gear is always going to turn in the same direction courtesy of a couple of ratchets. Now I try to design things so they use the same components. So universally I use 22mm skater bearings and 8mm bar. So we don't have to have a load of stuff. We can do this stuff having a few bits and pieces that are regular bits that we use. Now to make this thing, first thing is that bit needs a couple of bearings in it either end. So we put those bearings in there. And the same is true of these bits. And in the frame we put a couple of bearings in there and there. Now that bit takes this one facing that way and it has a 100mm bit of bar to go in there. And that has a gear on it so that we can actually take some output because this one is the one that will turn in the same direction every time. So we connect a generator to that, of course we have exactly what we want. So put the bar in there. And that goes in there like that. Now with the other bearings in place in the cradle, we take our other 8mm bar, which is 120 millimeters long, and that's going to go through like that and carry these two. But first, the ratchets are the same, apart from the ratchets form in different directions, and it doesn't matter which one you do, but take that arm and glue it onto one of the ratchets with a bit of super glue. So when you look on the back of these, you'll find two little holes right there. And then there are these tiny, tiny things, which are the ratchets with two little pegs on them. And the ratchets go in those pegs like that. You need to check to make sure it's the right, right way around because the ratchet needs to stop this from turning and only allow it to turn one way. When you've checked it, glue it in with a bit of super glue and do the same on the other one. And when you've added the ratchet, you can feed the whole thing on the bar, including the spacer, and that's what the assembly looks like. And you can check it just by giving it a turn, and the ratchet should click and catch on both that sides of there, but in opposite directions. And then we can force it onto here gently. And that is it complete. Now that arm can wobble up and down, so obviously we'd attach it to something like a bottle and the bottle would go up and down with the waves. But because it's got a ratchet facing that way and a ratchet facing that way, as I move that arm up and down, what you should see is that that is only going in one direction. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> so it does that because the ratchet catches, obviously, and drives one gear or the other gear using the pole on the ratchet. Now, that's kind of cool. The ratchets are a little bit delicate, I think. So if I were to redesign this, what I'd probably do 
is use something like this, which is a one-way clutch bearing, and we use that in a freewheel generator that we made. But the ratchets are easy to see, easy to understand, and that creates a mechanism where that, going up and down, can translate into only a circular motion. So it'd be brilliant for something like wave power, where we're using that bobbing up and down, or lots of things where you've got the linear up and down motion that you want to translate into a rotating motion, because that we can just put straight on a generator. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.